Welcome, Take It Up with Jessica Lee. I'm here with John McKinney, who is the SVP of Strategy and Innovation for BMC's Z Solutions Business Unit. John, welcome to the show. Thank you, Jessica. I'm so glad to have you here because, you know, we don't talk about mainframe business that often. And um, I want to hear all about that modernization innovation that's happening in the mainframe business. And I know your particular team is very much dedicated to helping companies take advantage of the mainframe and be competitive and Absolutely. innovate. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, a lot of... Uh, uh, there's a lot written, and we hear a lot about uh, modernization and innovation, and uh, a lot of people think, wow, that's the cloud, right? And there's a, a lot of tremendous innovation on the cloud. Yeah. Uh, but I think what a lot of people don't realize is how dependent on the mainframe we all are in terms of the things that we do just every day. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, we're talking about, uh, you know, we all uh, probably get our coffee in the morning. Some of us do it at Starbucks and you know, you're swiping your card and that's a mainframe transaction in the background that's handling that, right. that financial bit, right? Uh, I flew in yesterday uh, uh, from Houston on United Airlines, right? My airline ticket, that's uh, going through a mainframe on the back end, mm -hmm. right? So just about everything that you do involves the mainframe and when you think about our lives today, um, there's more applications, there's more transactions, more data. And the mainframe really is, for many of the largest organizations in the world, it's that centralized hub in their IT architecture mm -hmm. that they're so dependent upon. So there's a tremendous amount of innovation that has occurred and continues to occur to make sure that that centralized hub is up and running, it's performing, it's always available. So then we want to do things, it's there and it's working. You mentioned that the mainframe is always compatible downward. What, what does that mean? Well, the mainframe has been around for more than 50 years, uh, but today's mainframe is is uh, no more like uh, my car today that I drive, you know, versus the car my dad had 50 years ago, right? So, yeah, it still has four wheels and a steering wheel, but the insides of the car, the engine, the capabilities are just far surpass anything that was on the road then. Uh, and today's mainframe is the same way. You know, what's what's interesting though is the applications that started, you know, 30, 40, 50 years ago, 20 years ago. Uh, as new generations of mainframes come, and IBM has done a tremendous job of innovating on the platform, and we expect a new box from IBM later in the year, uh, that uh, the box is always downward compatible. Mm -hmm. So what that means is you bring in a new box, your applications that you had written and updated are still compatible. You don't have to make changes to ensure that it's running. So that means organizations have been able to reap the benefits of the business logic they built into these applications over many, many years and they continue to enhance it. So it just makes the, the overall cost of ownership very low, which is another thing people don't think about. They think, oh, the mainframe is expensive. But when you think about the number of transactions it runs uh, each and every day, the amount of data processes, it's very economical when you look at it in that, in that regard as well. And you know it. You, I trust everything you say because you've been doing this for like 23 years. I have, yeah. I started when I was 14, right? You know, so I've been doing it for a very long time. That's a joke, guys. I'm, I'm, <laughs> but yeah, no, absolutely. And uh, one thing is, you know, there's just so much that continues to change in the environment. Uh, you know, today's mainframe is just another computer. Mm -hmm. So it's connected. You know, 24 years ago, the mainframe was hardwired. You had terminals that you had to connect to it. Today, you know, you connect to uh, the mainframe through the, your applications from your you know, your phone, your smartphone, your tablet, you know, where, wherever you are in the world, you're connecting with a mainframe on the back end uh, probably several times a day. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, I use uh, the more, more recent apps that, uh, and a lot of the new e-commerce that came out more recently, right. uh, like uh, Amazon Prime. Yeah. I order a lot of things on Amazon yeah. Prime. Like, I think a lot of the yeah, folks... I, I think we all resemble that remark. <laughs> But even Amazon Prime, for example, relies on mainframe, right? It's not everything's not on the cloud. Yeah, absolutely. So you think about Amazon Prime. Most of us, you know, got our Prime account is connected to either our, our bank account directly or maybe a credit card. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter. Either way, uh, that transaction, you know, the financial transaction that's happening is going to hit something that's going to hit a mainframe that's going to process that transaction for mm, you. I see. And uh, I don't know about you, but I don't li actually live next door to Amazon, so they actually have to ship it to me, right? Same so, day delivery. Same day delivery, <laughs> exactly. I haven't seen the drone drop on my front Not door yet. yet. Yeah. 
But, you know, when it's shipped, that's probably coming through the post office, maybe UPS, mm -hmm. maybe it's FedEx. Right. And each and every one of those use mainframes to handle their logistics mm -hmm. and their trapping applications, mm -hmm. right? So I don't know about you, but if it's something that, that you're really interested in, you might just check a couple of times, you know, is it there yet on your phone? Right. And when you do, that's hitting a mainframe to find out where it is in the route. Right, right. and the supply chain The systems. supply chain, yeah. exactly. So all of that, all of that is there. But one thing that you mentioned, you know, one of the things that we, um, we all see with our, our um, you know, uh, our applications on our phone is they're always bringing out new capabilities, mm -hmm. right? There, there's something new that's coming, and that's just something that's been made possible with today's DevOps uh, technology and approach, right? Mm -hmm. The DevOps process and agile development. Yep. And uh, at BMC, you know, we announced a, a set of solutions called AMI, Automated Mainframe Intelligence, mm -hmm. last October. And our first solution was around AMI for security, but we just released AMI DevOps for DB2. And what that enables clients to do is ensure that their agile pipeline process, which basically just kind of automates the release uh, all the way from code delivery to implementation, uh, when that needs to touch a mainframe on the back end, mm -hmm. we can help them automate that directly from the application development's tool of choice. So for many customers, that's Jenkins. So we plug into a Jenkins pipeline to enable fast, agile application delivery to continue to work on the mainframe just as it does in any other environment as well. Wow, but you know, DevOps, I hear now they, they put SEC in the middle. So DevSecOps. Dev, DevOps, SecOps, yeah, yes. exactly. So security is, is probably more important than it's ever been before, mm -hmm. right? There's just, there's so much for organizations to be concerned about, right? They wanna make sure that their, their environments are secure. Uh, so it's all about kind of detection. You know, you wanna prevent everything you can and that's absolutely you know one of the first things in any security posture, but you also have to have detection going on, right? So Amy for security is a set of solutions that provides really endpoint detection and response in the mainframe environment. And you think about it, if the mainframe is the hub and the mainframe is holding so much critical data, mm -hmm. you want to make sure that that data is protected and that you know if there's anything that's going on by a threat, whether it's an inside or outsider threat. Uh, mainframes are very fast and mainframes have some of the best encryption in the world. Mm -hmm. So just think about what kind of impact it would have if there was ransomware that was actually encrypting some of your critical data on the mainframe. Mm -hmm. You want to know about those types of possibilities as soon as you possibly can. And that's what Amy for Security does. It right. alerts the uh, security uh, operations center to uh, any type of uh, abnormal behavior using uh, AI to uh, identify that for them. Okay, so that's more the innovation that's taking Absolutely. place. Absolutely. I mean, you have a broad uh, uh, portfolio of solutions like monitoring, security, database, yes. uh, backup. Backup uh, and recovery, administration, yeah. uh, cost and capacity management. So really just about uh, every one of the functional disciplines that uh, you think of in traditional IT operations management, mm -hmm. uh, we provide a set of solutions and we do that increasingly. It's under our automated mainframe intelligence or Amy, Amy. kind of family of solutions. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we started on that journey a couple of years ago. And again, kind of coming back to the, uh, the aging workforce that exists on the mainframe. And many of our clients were saying, you know, we know that we're going to have people that have been working on the platform for 20 and 30 years mm -hmm. that are retiring. And we have new people that aren't as familiar with the platform. I see. Uh, but new people that aren't as familiar with the platform are, you know, actually uh, sometimes more interested in using new technologies, right? So they're interested in new automation and AI and machine learning and how that can be applied mm -hmm. to help them do their jobs more effectively. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're seeing a lot more interest and in uptake in using and embracing uh, newer technologies like Amy in the mainframe space to help clients better run and reinvent their business. Very interesting. Yes, it's true. I think uh, when uh, engineers or students graduate from, from university, um, they don't necessarily think, oh, I'm going to go and work in the mainframe environment. Right. But you're saying, actually, that's where there's a lot of growth opportunity for a them. Absolutely. You know, with so many people that are retiring today, you know, we do uh, an annual survey of the mainframe environment. We just mm -hmm. completed it a couple of months ago. Um, and it was over 1,100 respondents across the world, right? And so one of the things that we've noticed in the last three surveys is the age demographics are shifting. Mm. So just three years ago, more than half of the respondents were over the age of 50. 
Now, more than half the respondents are under the age of 50, and the group uh, under the age of 40 continues to grow. Mm -hmm. We've seen the number of women that are responding that are now in uh, working in the mainframe environment has increased. It's up to 30%. So we're seeing a demographic shift occur. Mm -hmm. And with that, as I said, you have uh, different attitudes and interests, right? So, uh, you know, we track things about, um, you know, what's their interest in uh, looking at uh, AI and machine learning? What's their interest in deploying automation? Uh, and you'll see uh, a much higher scores there overall uh, in terms of their interest and willingness to adapt and look at new technologies to help them solve some of the traditional challenges that exist around keeping the applications up and running and available and performing well, ensuring that business continuity is strong, that they can recover from a variety of conditions. Mm -hmm. You know, all the things you always have to do in IT, but as IT continues to evolve and get more complex, it just makes those uh, those requirements and those capabilities, you know, more challenging to do in traditional manual ways. But besides the workforce, what else do you think is a challenge? What are you excited about the future? Uh, I, I'm really excited about uh, just the, the continued uh, growth in terms of the, what our customers are doing with uh, their applications. Uh, we were talking to a customer the other day, uh, and it's an insurance company, right? And so, uh, you know, if you, if you drive a car, you know, probably sometime or other you've had a fender bender or not, right? Yeah. And they were just telling us, you know, one of the things they're doing is, uh, they're using now, um, they can have a, one of their clients, if they've had an accident, they can take pictures of the car and send that in. So they, you know, literally it'll tell them on the phone, you know, take a picture here upload and around it. it and I experienced upload it. that actually. Did you? Oh, very I'm sorry. Smooth. <laughs> very smooth. Well, yeah. that's good. I mean, it's so quick. You upload, they verify just using the pictures alone and approve the whole a payment. Absolutely. And they were telling us how with some, uh, one of the things they're doing is they can determine from pictures if the car is a total loss or not mm -hmm. and not have to have an adjuster come out right, yes. to verify that. That's right. Which is which is basically using you know, AI that's available now to do those things. So it's just interesting whether it's in the insurance or whether it's in healthcare, government, there's just always some interesting new application of technology to just to solve some interesting business problems or to create some new business services. So it's just fun to talk to customers and what they're trying to do to service you know, their business. And then for us, how we help them be successful that's is the right. fun part. Yeah, because that's like really added value, right? It saves me time, it saves them time, it saves costs overall. Absolutely, yeah. And, and so that's that's what makes it fun is just working with customers. That's always the best part. What else is exciting for you? So um, I, on Amy, we've got some more solutions coming out later this year. Mm -hmm. uh, so one of them is something we're calling Amy Predictive. Okay. Uh, so what that is is, you know, you look at the, the combination of factors that we've been talking about, right? Uh, data volumes and transaction volumes growing, the environment becoming more complex because of all the different pieces and parts, the fact that uh, we've got an aging and retiring workforce. And so what that means is, you know, occasionally things don't actually always work like people plan, believe it or not, right? So problems do happen. Yes. And what Amy Predictive does is it's using uh, AI and machine learning and looking at a variety of KPIs in the environment to identify anomalous conditions. So uh, we're mapping and uh, being able to basically kind of help customers see around the corner. We're predicting business disruptive events before they actually occur so they can take corrective action, right, to minimize a disruption, whether it might be a, a slowdown to a critical business application or, or maybe a complete outage. And, and clients are telling us, you know, they've done a tremendous job about reducing planned outages, but unplanned disruptions still happen, right? Things happen. So the more that they can do to prevent that from happening, or when it does happen, to really shorten the time that that disruption occurs is tremendously valuable to them. So. That'll be the first in a series of, of products around Amy that will help with uh, predictive analytics, uh, prescribed remediation. So you see a problem, what do you do to fix it? Right. And then ultimately, uh, actually uh, taking you know intelligent automated remediation, remediation to actually prevent that problem from becoming a real business disruptive event. So those are some pretty cool things that we're working on that'll be coming out over the next several quarters. You bought CoreLogic last year. Is, CoreLog. Is it, oh, CoreLog. Yes. Year. So is this part of the technology that is being uh, 
merged together so, in Amy? Yeah, CoreLog is the base technology that's in our Amy for Security Solutions, mm -hmm. and we're using some of the CoreLog technology also as one of the uh, ingestion feeds for the data mm -hmm. that we're analyzing at Amy Predictive. So uh, absolutely leveraging that technology in a number of nice. uh, interesting ways. <laughs> Great. Well, it's been a pleasure having you here. It's so informative to hear about the mainframe business and the services that you add to the whole mainframe customer base. Well, thank you, Jessica. Enjoyed it very much. Look forward to seeing you again. There you have it, folks. Take it up with Jessica Lee, John McKenney from BMC.